Our goal here for part two of chapter 22 is to share with you some pathologies of the respiratory system. So let's look at these disorders here one by one. Here is a quick summary to get us started. We have COPD, which is known as chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases. We have asthma, chronic bronchitis, emphysema, laryngitis, cystic fibrosis, infant respiratory distress syndrome, pneumothorax, atelectasis, pleurisy, apnea, dyspnea, tuberculosis, pneumonia, pleural effusion, hypoxia, and lung cancer. Let's start off with COPD. So what I want you to know about COPD is that it's a general term that indicates a progressive disorder of the airways that actually restricts the airflow. And so it reduces alveolar ventilation. Okay, to increase that alveolar ventilation, a lot of times we have to use positive pressure systems to help the person be able to breathe. Then we have asthma. So we saw an asthma slide earlier in chapter 22. But for those unfamiliar with exactly what asthma is, it's a situation where the respiratory passages are extremely sensitive to irritants. And that results in a constriction of the airways, results in inflammation, it results in edema. And that's edema within the mucosa of the passageways. And it also causes accelerated mucus production. So asthma in itself can be caused by a variety of, of things, including allergens, toxins, or even exercise. Some people get asthma when the weather gets extremely cold. So once again, there's a variety of different etiologies of asthma. Then we have chronic bronchitis, which is long-term inflammation and swelling in the bronchial linings. And that leads to an overproduction, once again, of mucus secretions. The characteristic sign of chronic bronchitis is frequent coughing. And so a lot of times this can be related to cigarette smoking, but also it can result from other environmental irritants that a person might encounter. And sometimes we refer to this with the term blue bloater, and that's because of the edema from the heart failure and the skin, which turns blue or cyanotic due to a lack of oxygen. Then we have emphysema, which is a chronic condition. It's progressive and it's characterized by shortness of breath and an inability to tolerate physical exertion. The main problem here is the destruction of the alveolar surfaces and inadequate surface area for the oxygen and carbon dioxide exchange to occur. And your OpenStax books goes into a lot of detail on that oxygen carbon dioxide exchange. That's something good to familiarize yourself with so you have that knowledge. So to compensate for these symptoms, the individual breathes more rapidly, so they hyperventilate a bit to maintain the near normal oxygenation. Laryngitis is an itis condition, so we know that it's inflammation, and so the larynx are our vocal cords, our voice box. And so laryngitis naturally would be the inflammation of the vocal cords. Okay, here you can see a picture of normal vocal cords and inflamed vocal cords. Again, Mayo Clinic, WebMD, all good sources as long as they're peer reviewed. Okay, here's another from Mayo Clinic, cystic fibrosis. This is a progressive genetic disease and uh, it's the most common inherited disorder among Caucasians of Northern Europe descent. And it's really a common, it can be considered a lethal inherited disorder because of how serious it is. It causes an increase in the mucus produced by the mucous membranes of the respiratory and, digest and digestive tracts. And then within the lungs, the excess mucus inhibits the gas exchange and essentially it clogs the respiratory passages that we have, All right? It's not extremely common at all. It's actually only common in one out of every 2,500 births. 
Okay, and so we would once again consider it's a very serious disorder. It can be a life-threatening disorder. And then we talked uh, in our summary about infant respiratory distress syndrome. So what you need to know here is that this is the result of an adequate surfactant production in newborns or premature babies. This can actually lead to increased surface tension. It can lead to alveolar collapse. And we've heard alveolar now a few times. Okay, we know that the uh, alveola are these tiny air sacs that we have at the end of our bronchioles. So you can think of them as like the air tubes in the lungs. So now let's look at pneumothorax and atelectasis. So to differentiate between these two things, you can see the two pictures, they're both x-rays, and they give you some descriptors that explain what the difference is between pneumothorax and atelectasis. The important things for you to know here are that the air within the interpural space resulting in an increased pressure on the surface of the lungs, which can cause the lung to collapse would be the pneumothorax, and then the actual collapsed lung would be the atelectasis. So pleuritis or pleurisy is the inflammation of the pleural membranes. And we know that those are the tissues that line the lungs and the chest cavity as well. Then we have apnea. We know if, if somebody has sleep apnea, it's a period in which their respiration is suspended. So, um, so most often it's associated with sleep and it occurs as a reflex shortly before someone is about to sneeze or cough as well. All right, so it can be serious as it says in the caption, um, it is a situation where a person's breathing stops and starts as they sleep, right? Stops and starts. And then we have tuberculosis. So once again, you have a couple x-rays here. The one on our left is the normal chest x-ray. The one on our right here is a chest x-ray showing uh, clear signs of tuberculosis. So what is tuberculosis exactly? It's an infection and it's caused by a specific bacterium called mycobacterium tuberculosis. And it results in fibroid masses in the lungs. Okay, so if you look closely, you're gonna be able to see those masses there on both lungs. The other thing that you notice uh, in the case of tuberculosis is an increase in the dead space in between the lungs. Then we go to our next slide on pneumonia. And so pneumonia could be bacterial or it could be viral. It's an infection of the lungs. There's ways that you can assess for pneumonia. We call it, um, we're looking for tactile fremitus and an increased amount of that. If you were to place both hands on someone's back, and if you were to see an increased amount of tactile frenemis when they're saying 99, 99, 99, that uh, can be a positive sign for pneumonia. And so with the tactile frenemis test, what we're actually looking to assess is to see if there is an increased amount of air and density in the tissue that's present within the lungs. So we'll be able to feel that in our assessment. So we should notice equal and moderate vibrations as they talk. And if those vibrations that we're getting from the test are increased or decreased, then that's a positive test once again for pneumonia. Pleural effusion. Pleural effusion is a buildup of fluid between the tissues that line the lungs in our chest. So if there's poor pumping by the heart, we learned a lot about the heart in our first couple of chapters of the course or if there is inflammation, increased inflammation, effusion is a possibility because in that case, more fluid would tend to build up. Okay, so pleural effusion, once again, fluid building up in the tissues between the lungs and the chest. Okay, so you can see the fluid build up here. And then finally, let's look at lung cancer. There's some links that I'll let you view on your own regarding uh, cigarette smoking as well as vaping. And that concludes our lecture on pathologies, chapter 22, part two. We'll see you for the lecture on chapter 23.